Hey, you've been off. We got to hurry up. The sun's going down. <laughs> we get turned around the right way. What we have here is a Lindsay servo drive. It's type EBS 9327-ES. And the complaint is that the resolver is not working. The resolver feedback to this motor is not working. So I have our test set up. I have a 10 gallon resolver, two part epoxy to the housing of this DC motor. So that when I rotate the DC motor, that resolver will rotate and apply sine cosine waveforms to the input of this servo drive. Now, on the output side, the UVW side, I've got our light bulb bank to simulate the servo motor. All right, let me go around and we'll power up this drive with 380 volts AC three phase to L1, L2, and L3. Now, I'm going to turn on the DC motor, and it's rotating. We'll get closer to this so you always see it. And I can see 87, 86 RPM in the HMI panel, the human interface panel. So that feedback appears to be working. I'm going to apply 24 volts DC from a separate power supply to terminal 28 and it's ground at terminal 39. And we'll see if those light bulbs come on. Look at that, we're running. <laughs> We were running. Every now and then we get throw to bone. <laughs> I can't duplicate their problem. So it appears to us that they have a bad motor, bad resolver in their motor. We got the wrong part. <laughs> Let me slow this motor down. Yeah. It's never the motor. It's always the drive. <laughs> uh, well, that was easy. Let's get close to everything so you all can see what's going on. And right here, the DC motor is rotating the resolver. Now in the past I used to rotate the resolvers by hand. And then one day I, I had a brainstorm. I said, you know what? If I take a resolver and attach it to a DC motor, I can have the DC motor rotate my resolver. <laughs> now right here is the uh, X7 connector, DB9F, that we've got our resolver connected to. Now, if you ever get an OH3 alarm, it's because of the thermal feedback, and that's on these two pins right here. I'll provide uh, um, my drawings of these hookups right here at the end of the video. Here is terminal 28, where we have plus 20 volt, 4 volts DC, and it's ground on terminal 39. I can turn that off right here. Now the output is off. I'm going to turn it on again. Oh, with the drive stopped in the display it says STP1, stop one. There. Now stop one has disappeared from the display and the light bulbs are sequencing through UV and W. I'm going to hand hold the movie camera and put it in front of that display so you all can see what that display is doing.
There's the RPMs from the feedback, from the resolver feedback. I'm going to stop the DC motor that's rotating that resolver. And you see the RPMs go to zero. Negative one, zero. Okay, we're going to rotate that DC motor again by applying a DC voltage to the armature. There's our RPMs again. Now I'm going to stop the DC motor and I'm going to turn off the 24 volts to terminal 28 and it's ground on 39. There you see, STP1. Now let me disconnect that motor thermal by disconnecting the resolver feedback connector. There's OH3, a warning. Let me plug that back in. STP1. I'm going to rotate the DC motor and the resolver. And I'm going to turn, enable the drive to run, applying 24 volts to terminal 28 and 39 ground. Let's go look at the light bulbs. See if I can back up a little bit without tripping over anything. Here's the U to V waveform. Spread that out and look at the pulse width modulation. Ain't that pretty? Let's bring that time back in. All right, now let's look at U to W. U to W. Spread that time out. Look at its pulse width modulation. Very nice. Bring that time back in. All right, and lastly. We're going to look at V to W. And look at that. They all look the same. We'll spread that time out. Bring the time back in. Good high side, low side firing. There's nothing wrong with this drive. Phew. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> that is good. She's a good drive. Okay. I'm going to disable the drive from running. Turning off the 24 volts DC from terminal 28 and it's ground on 39. I'm going to stop our test DC motor and resolver. Now I'm going to go over and turn the 380 volts 3 phase off from the L1, L2, and L3. And we're going to head to the hooch. <laughs> nice. Okay, all. Thank you very, thank you very much for coming by and watching us perform that test on that good resolver input to that drive. They either got a bad resolver in their motor, 
a bad motor, not rotating, or they got a bad cable, bad feedback cable, or bad UVW cable. Hard to say from here in the shop. We're not standing there in front of that machine to figure out what's going on. <laughs> But we can get them going in the right direction by saying there's nothing wrong with this lensy servo drive. Good night, all. Let's get out of here. We'll see you in the next one.